John, can you give me the, the saga of CHCH and in a truncated form, it seems like it's gone through so many twists and turns. <laughs> the saga, it's just celebrated its 60th anniversary, which is really amazing when you think about it. We broke away, we were the first independent station in the country and uh, have a, a really rich history of creating local content. Some of you may still watch House of Frightenstein. I know it's still shown in L.A. But, um, Is that still on the yeah, air? Yeah, it's still on the air, believe it or not. Um, it, CHCH was, was founded back in 1954 um, by um, uh, a man who was in radio at the time. I think he, he was involved with uh, CHML at the time started CHCH television, broke away from the CBC, became the first uh, independent. And uh, our biggest problem throughout history, throughout our history, has been trying to provide a news content without having any, as a solo player, we don't have affiliates, we don't have the luxury of being able to tap into uh, uh, a head office or a, a bureau in, in Toronto and Ottawa or whatever to, to get access our content. So we truly are independent. Uh, we've been bought and sold in just the, I've been here since 88 and I think we've, I've had seven owners in the, you know, since 1988. So it's been a really, really difficult uh, journey for the station. Because as, as Sonia mentioned, we are in the shadow of Toronto, we are always rated within Toronto. So we are up against CTV, CFTO, for example, when we're rating a 6 o'clock newscast. We're not rated on how many people watch us in Hamilton, but how many people watch us in Toronto. And that's how we compete for our national ad buys. And so that's what makes it very, very difficult when you're an independent player. And, and it's just the way that the market's just the way the advertising is structured. We've fought for years to try to be pulled out of that, like London is and Kitchener. But we are within that... that, that um, market and therefore it's very difficult to to compete having said that we can finish second and third every other day on a regular basis in toronto against global and ctv so we have clearly we still have a lot of eyeballs in this area recently we went to local uh news all day long and a lot of people think that the industry is dying i do believe it's going to change it's always been undergoing some sort of a change but netflix clearly has had a huge impact on how people view television today but Local will allow stations to survive. Live will keep stations alive. If you're in sports and you're covering local sports, people aren't going to you know, go back and say, I'll, I'll watch it at 3 in the morning or I'll watch it next week. They're going to watch it live either in a bar or at home. So I think the channels that are local, providing local sports will survive, and, and channels that are providing local news will probably survive. Uh, or news will survive, but local is also a component that, that um, I think that the bean counters have totally turned their back on, and, it's, and I think we're an example of a station that has proven you can, uh, you can actually turn a profit if you cater to a specific smaller market. We do not have any real true competition when it comes to local content. We're very lucky and, and very fortunate. But I do believe that people want local content. They can get national and international anywhere online on, you know, on, on television. But it's very difficult to access true local content. I mean, you said something very quickly there, uh, that you, you do local live like, all, day. all day. We tune in at 4 in the morning and we're live until 7 and then we go back live again at 11. All day. How many people work at CHCH? Uh, total with our, our Toronto head office, it's about 200. Uh -huh. But when we were... We were well, I can tell you exactly what happened. Um, in '09, Global owned us at the time, and they called us into a meeting in February and said, you have two weeks to find an owner, or we're shutting the station down. I was thinking, were you kidding me? They had stripped us of just about everything at this point, taken away. We used to cover all of... Our, our, our crews were so... They were so talented. They were always hired to, to do all of the CFL games, to do the NHL games. We went to Buffalo, covered the games there. We had... For years, our crew were hired to do the NBC games following the, um, uh, sorry, during the Olympics. In fact, two of our former staff members head up the host um, uh, broadcast division for IOC because they were so talented uh, covering the Olympics. Global came in and took all our resources, shut down all our mobiles, and uh, took all our programming, and we were just dying. And they cut back and cut back and cut back on our programming, and then a couple of, we tried to save, as you know, we tried to save the station. I actually did approach the mayor, it was Mayor Eisenberger at the time, and said, you got to get this, you know, take the license over. Let it be owned by the city. 
I thought it would be brilliant. You know, you could show the, the, any part of the city all day long and have this amazing um, opportunity to promote the city. Long story short, we were purchased by um, three or four gentlemen from Toronto for $11. That included all of the assets. We walked away from our pensions, uh, took the money out of it, but we had jobs. Nobody lost a job. They froze our salaries, and we all had jobs, and they hired about another 40 people. And we went live all day long. 